Hey, before the video starts today, I just want to let you know that I guess as I was recording, the camera was going in and out of focus. I don't know what's up with this camera, it always does that. But just letting you know, so don't get any headaches. Alright, hope you enjoy the video. Bye. Hi, I'm Brianna. I know it's been a very long time since you've seen me on this app. And there is no excuse for it. I just said, mm, don't really want to do it anymore. But it's 2021, so I'm back. And I'm better than ever. And I'm gonna actually try to post. I think I say that every time. Whoops. Anyways, as you can tell by the title of this video, I'm gonna be talking about the books I read this month. Yay! I'm gonna do makeup and book tags pretty soon. Stay with that one. <laughs> so let's start with the book I read the beginning of the month, which was. The Water Dancer by Tanashi Coates. Um, I actually started this book near the end of December, but I finished it in January. I was trying to finish it in 2020, but the way my life was going, it wasn't working. So I ended up finishing this in January, like first week of January. But holy Jesus, this book is an Opera's Book Club 2019, and it deserves that spot. Should I read all this to you? Sure. Young Hiram Walker was born into bondage. When his mother was sold away, Hiram was robbed of all memory of her, but was gifted with a mysterious power. Years later, when Hiram almost drowns in a river, the same power saves his life. This brush with death... Hmm? <laughs> this brush with death bursts an urgency in Hiram and a daring scheme to escape from the only home he's ever known. That's all I'm gonna read from that little ex. So it's basically this boy named Hiram, well, starts off as a boy and then it goes on to his life. He becomes a man in the book. But um, like it says, he was born into slavery and then he basically like finds the underground railroad. Ooh, he finds out the underground Ooh. It's really empowering and it really puts your mind in a different mindset because you just have you just really think about things differently after you read something with a different point of view like this like usually my books are the books i usually read are really fiction like this book is fiction but it could have easily been someone's life back then you know what i mean like i don't know like red queen and then cinder and crave those books have they're completely fake not one ounce of it can ever be true so Something like this really puts your mind in a different mindset and makes you think a little differently. I give it five out of five. No regrets. <laughs> Have an ebook here. After that, I finished Call Me By Your Name. Ooh, there's a glare. Andre Osman. Andre Osman. Pronunciation. Andre Osman. Andre Asiman. Andre Asiman. Okay. Yay. So basically, the story or this book, whatever, it's another. It's fiction. But this is fiction, but it can also easily be someone's life. It takes place in the eighties, I believe. Pretty sure. There's a movie based off of it, as you can tell by the cover. You know, there's our boy, our boy Timmy, on the cover. He stars in the movie. Anywho, is this young boy in Italy, they chillin' or whatever, and then their family, their family's like kinda rich, I'm guessing, cause like every summer they have someone come to their house and like work with the dad and then maybe learning or whatever. I don't know. Anywho, so this one year, this one boy comes to the house and they fall in love. But the thing is, this is the 80s. And they gay. Do you see the issue? I think I see an issue. In Italy. Yeah. <laughs> Justice for the peach. <laughs> I actually really do love this story. It was really cute. Um, well, not cute. Heartbreaking. I did kind of tear up. I'm not even going to lie to you guys. I gave it like a 3 out of 5. I actually really do like this book though. But it's not like a 5. 
There's a second book. It's called Find Me by Andre Asiman. I just didn't read that yet, but I'm getting there. I might read that maybe in like March or something. <laughs> I need a break from the story. Cause right after I read this book, I watched the movie like legit the same night. Book number three, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. V.E. Schwab. I am butchering all these names. I'm so sorry. If you have Book Talk or Bookstagram or Booktube, <laughs> um, you have probably already heard this book. This book has been everywhere, and I know I'm, I read it a little late because it was it was buzzing all over last year. But I was like, it can't be that good. Um, I read it. I do have some annotations. It's just my favorite quotes. Um, it's not that much, but. This book was a little overhyped. I'm not gonna lie. It is a really good story, but it was a little overhyped. It got really repetitive. Um, and I was really, 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 really happy when Henry came in the story. He changed things up a little bit because things were starting to sound over and over. It's like, okay, we get it. The story is this young girl named Adeline. And the thing is, she doesn't want to be married. Okay, she she's like 23, I believe. And she just does not want to get married and this place takes this takes place in the 700s in France so she makes she prays to the gods she says please god don't make me marry this man and the thing is you weren't supposed to pray like at night because she wasn't praying to like 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 the Christian God she was praying to these other gods and you, you can't pray to them after night because then that's when the bad things happen to you but she didn't realize it was so dark because she had her eyes closed praying in the woods um anywho she ends up living for 300 years beautiful love story it's a beautiful beautiful love story but I will say it was getting a little repetitive it split to like four parts so near part four is when things started to pick up. But I love the way it was written. Um, really nice. Really nice. I'm gonna give this one a four out of five. If it wasn't getting so fridger. I mean, that's the thing about stories that like take place in such a long period of time. Cause I read another book. Um, Sears or Cyrus. I'm not sure. I'm pronouncing all these names wrong. But it's, um, that one too it also takes place over a long period of time and things can get repetitive because like what how much can happen in one person's life you know Jeez. book number four the burning by laura bates i'm actually surprised i haven't seen this book anywhere like um the past three books i've shown they were like you know people were talking about them so here it is the cover burning laura bates this is placed in like in europe over there that side of the world <laughs> it takes place in Europe and this young girl and she moves to a new town beginning of the book we don't find out why she was she moved it's just she moved to a new town and she changed her name up a little bit um, she don't got no social media and she's just like she showed up oh wait um, the author of this book Laura Bates she is a she's a founder of the everyday sexism project so it says right on the cover, this is a book girls need to read because it deals with, um, you know, cyberbullying and people just ditching other people based on what other people said. And it's really kind of ridiculous. And it compares um, how girls in the 1600s, you know, with like witchcraft and everything, how the girls would get punished for things that other people did and it really that, that still goes on to this day in a different way so that's that's what this book was really comparing itself to um you know not as drastic in a way but still in a way you know like uh like victim blaming and just dress codes dress code it don't sound it don't sound that bad but it is it is really putting all the attention on the girls so you know shaming how girls dress but that's what this that's what mainly what this book is all about and i actually really liked it i finished it in about two days it was a really easy quick read um but i really liked it 
Once it did take a little long to get to the point of why she left her old town. Um, but I felt like it was good. Like as she was learning about the past of this, of this witch that she's reading on, that she compares with, or that she relate, she's able to relate to. And then we learn about her past and why she moved and all this other good stuff. I give this a three out of five. Clink. You should read this. Book five. I honestly wouldn't really call this a book per se because it's it's poetry. Um, it is a book. It's just a poetry book. As you can tell, I had this annotated as well. Can you see? Some annotations or whatever. Can you see them? There we go. See? So this is called Homebody by Rapi Kerr. This is a shame. There's not really much to say about a poetry book. I mean, I loved, I loved, loved this one, okay? Usually I'm not a big fan of poetry because it's just, I like a long story, something that, you know, it's like a, a, a ride. But this one, it's just something about this one that I was really able to relate to. And I was able to connect with the words that she was saying. Not, not all of it, but most of it. I was really able to relate to. And it, I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Back of the book, it says, after feeling disconnected for so long, my mind and body are finally coming back to each other. I really liked it. I mean, I can't really give it a rating because, you know, poetry is different for everybody. It really depends on how you feel and what you, how you think about certain things. One thing I do have to say about this book though, if you are planning on reading it, it does talk about sexual assault, racism, and sexism. So if you do read this, just be aware that there are, this has some really heavy, heavy topics in it. Just letting you know. Those are actually all the books that I finished in January of 2021. A book that I started, well, an audiobook that I started, but I haven't finished yet. It's called Such a Fun Age. Ah, you can see my little ring light. Well, it's called Such a Fun Age by uh, Kylie Reed. This is a really good story so far. I'm only on chapter nine. I have a long way to go. Switches point of views between the, a babysitter and the mom of the baby that the babysitter is babysitting. <laughs> and they're two completely different lifestyles. The babysitter is a young black woman. You know, she's going to college, whatnot. She got a, she got a job or whatever. And then this the mom is a she's a older white lady and she um she like writes letters for a living, I guess. Um okay. And I see the plot coming up. Okay. I see it. I see the issue. And I am so excited for where this is about to go. Alright, well that was everything I read in January 2021 and things I've started and didn't finish. But that's a different story. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Quick, easy video. I don't read that much in a month. I know there's people who read that amount of books in one week, which is ridiculous. Oh my god. Let me know if you read any of these books, if you liked them yourself, if you didn't like them, just what you thought about them in general. And let me know if you're planning on reading them before you saw this video or after. I didn't want to explain the books too much because knowing like me, I can't just like tell a summary without end up, ended up telling the whole plot. So how to keep that, how to keep it real simple. You know, the basics of what's going on in the books. Well, I'll see you guys next time, whenever I shall bring out this camera set again. And I'll see you guys then. Bye, thank you!